let's start by connecting the USB cable to the ST-Link USB connector, which is the right one uh, viewed from the top. And the second step is starting a QPMX. So I will do this hands-on in parallel with you and switch in between the presentation and, and the live view. So let me open QPMX. And in the next step, we will create a new project. We go to board selector and select uh, the Nucleo W55. When you create the project, a window will pop up asking you if you want to initialize the peripheral in default mode and click no, because this will pre-configure some of the GPIOs according to the Nucleo. So there will be pre-configured GPIOs for the LEDs and also for the buttons but otherwise the, the project will be completely empty and it's up to us to uh, initialize the peripherals and also the middlewares. So let me start the new project. Okay, so in the board selector you can type WB55RG and this is, this is our target. So we start by double clicking and click no. So first thing we can do is to inspect the documentation. If you click on help and uh, docs and resources, you will get a quick access to the user manual for the Nucleo. So in there you will find also the schematics. And in the MCU tab, you find the data sheet, reference menu, programming menu, and errata sheet. And also a list of application nodes which are related to WB. The first thing we need to do uh, is to enable a pull up for the, for the button. So you see the part of the schematics of the button, button one, which is connected to PC, PC4 through a 1K resistor. So we need to enable an internal pull-up to have a stable value. So let's go into the system core, then GPIO, and find the PC, PC4. And let's enable the internal, internal pull-up. So right now we want to enable uh, well, in the end, we, we want to enable the Bluetooth middleware, which is right now grayed out. If you hover the cursor on the on the grayed out VPAN middleware, you, you will see some contextual help. So the QPMX tries to guide you what to do. It shows you the dependencies. So you see that the BLE stack and the BLE middleware can be enabled when we enable RF, RTC, IPCC, HSM, et cetera, et cetera. So here you can see some sort of in-program uh, help, and we will do these steps one by one. So first in the RCC, in the clock configuration, we need to enable the external high-speed crystal and also low, uh, external low speed crystal. The HSE uh, 32 megahertz is a mandatory part for WB. It's directly used by the radio to generate the carrier. And so is the low speed clock, which is used to time um, things like connection interval or advertising interval. So let me go to RCC and enable both external crystals. So the next thing is hardware semaphores. Uh, hardware semaphore is a periphery which is used to synchronize the access by the two cores to shared peripheries. Example of a shared periphery is, uh, is a sum registers in the clock tree or a random number generator. So the HSM in the, under the system core, we need to simply activate the periphery. The next thing is the IPC, the Interprocessor Communication Controller. And I'd like to spend a few words on this one because it's a quite unique feature of WB. 
Uh, as you know, the architecture is a dual core. There is a Cortex M0, which uh, runs the RF stack, and the user application is implemented on a separate Cortex M4. The two cores communicate through a shared part of memory in SRAM2, and IPCC is a periphery responsible for messaging mechanisms between the two cores. So basically, it can generate an interrupt for the receiving core that there is some message in the in the SRAM, or it can also generate an interrupt for the transmitting core that the message has been received and the memory can be freed or used for something else. In the QPMX, I will go to IPCC, activate the periphery, and also enable the interrupt for the Cortex M4. Next is RTC. Uh, real-time clock. In fact, RTC is required only for virtual timers. It's a, it's a software component delivered by ST, uh, which is built on top of real-time clock internal wake-up timer. And it allows you to create up to 255 software timers, for, which you can use for whatever reason in your application. We will not use this particular feature Nevertheless, uh, it's a, it is a dependency for the Bluetooth middleware, so we need to enable it. So let's go to uh, the timers tab and in the real time clock, activate the clock source and internal wake up timer. And we might as well enable the interrupt in case we decide to use it. So let's go to the next slide. So uh, the last periphery we need to enable is the is the RF. So let's go to QPMX and it's hidden in the connectivity tab, RF, and let's activate it. So now you notice that the VPAN middleware is not grayed out anymore, which means we can we can activate uh, one of the uh, one of the stacks. So let's enable the BLE. And there is a set of options available. By default, uh, there is enabled the point to point server that I already discussed. We could use it, but in fact, we want to do it from, from scratch. So we, we will implement the same behavior but based on the custom custom template, which will allow us a better control. Of, uh, of the services and also the characteristic. So the first step is to turn off the point-to-point -point server and enable the custom template. And you notice there are more tabs appearing, which will give us some more control of what's going on under the hood. So next step, uh, in the BLE advertising tab, we can actually control the content of the advertising packets. So by default, th there is not, not much. Uh, we can enable, for example, the complete name, which is something that we will see on the screen of the, of the smartphone. So please name it uh, uniquely so that you can recognize your own device and do not connect to um, your neighbor. In my case, I will I will call it. Uh, I will first enable the complete local name and define it to be my device 1997. Uh, next thing, uh, we will create our own uh, BLE service. So let's go to the BLE GUT tab and. Let's enable, we want to enable a single single service. And then we need to name it. Here, the uniqueness is not important, so you can call it whatever you like. I will call it my, my SVC. And I use it both for the long and also the short name. And you see there is another tab appearing, which is in fact the definition of your service. Go to the tab, which is named after your service. 
And there you see there is a single characteristic already predefined. We will need to name it. And uh, you also notice there is a, a field called UUID, uh, the Universal Unique Identifier. So when the when the GUT client uh, performs the service and characteristic discovery, it's using these identifiers to recognize the service. For the proprietor service, this uh, these numbers are are random, and they are 128 uh, bits in length, so 16 16 bytes. Uh, you notice uh, that uh, we are displaying only the the upper two which is the reduced reduced form of UUID. The rest is uh, randomly generated. But if you want, you can select the type uh, of UUID to full and then you can uh, set it to what uh, you can set it to whatever number you you want. So let's let's do that in QPMX. Uh, so you see there is uh, one characteristic already defined. Uh, this is the the identifier of the of the service. You can switch to full, but uh, we don't need to change this. In fact, it's just uh, for your information. Um, here we have to name our our characteristic. So I will call it my correct my car right because in fact I want the phone to be able to write to this characteristic, and based on the write event processed by the application we will toggle an LED. So that's why we need to define this characteristic to be writable. So first the name, and then in the properties of this characteristic, we can enable the property write. Uh, if you scroll to the very bottom, we want to disable all the events generated by BLE stack when there is some action performed on this particular characteristic. And the only event we want to process is uh, the write. So whenever the phone writes to the characteristic, the BLE stack will generate an event, which we will later process on the application side. And in fact, uh, this, this is it. We need one small change in the clock tree. We want to clock the real-time clock from the low-speed external crystal and also the RF wake-up clock. So again, this is the clock used to time connection, advertising intervals and, and similar. So in the, in the presentation, uh, in the clock configuration tab, we select the LSE as a source for the RTC, and we use the same clock for the RF system wake up. And when you're done, uh, you can go to the project manager, name your project, set the tool chain to be Cube IDE, and generate the project. So I go to project manager, I will call my project um, my project WB, for example, and set the tool chain to QPIDE. And let's generate it. Uh, okay, so the project has been generated. I can open it in QPIDE. It has been imported successfully. And as a quick test, we will build it and run it. We did not implement any application behaviors. There will be not much to see, but at least we will be able to connect to the target and see the service and see the characteristics. So the build uh, is successful. There are no errors, just a few warnings that we can ignore for now. So let's let's flash it. And here you see my nucleo board. I have the smartphone application STBLE2 box ready, so I'll open it. 
and you can you can see all the devices that are advertising around me you can sort by rssi uh, to have it to have your device on top my device 97 i can connect to it and here you see the ble address on top the signal strength uh, minus 56 db there are three ble services the first two they are added by default because every BLE device uh, needs to have them. The third one is in fact our proprietary service that we have just defined in the QPAMX. And you can notice the UUID. Uh, in fact, we have seen the first two bytes of it in QPAMX. And if you click on it, you see a single characteristic which is uh, writable. So in fact, you can write something to it uh, nothing will happen as we didn't process uh, the event yet but anyway you can see that uh, it's uh, the, applic the application is directly compilable and runnable on the target so the next step uh, is to implement the event handler when the phone writes to the characteristic but before we do that, I would like to do, make a quick overview of the source source tree. So you, you can see in the cube IDE that there is a folder core, which includes the initialization uh, of the of the microcontroller and also of the CM0 plus. There are interrupt service routine, main.c and uh, similar kind of things. Then we have drivers. For the CMSYS and HAL. In the middleware folder, you see the VPAN, which includes the BLE middleware. And then there is a folder STM32 underscore VPAN, which implements uh, the BLE related uh, application. So we will modify for sure some of these uh, files later on. In the last folder, the utilities, you see the uh, low power manager. We will not touch that. And also a sequencer, uh, which we will see a little bit later. Uh, just to remind you, a sequencer, it's a, it's a very simple non preemptive scheduler that is uh, integrated in most WB examples. Basically, it's a while loop that schedules multiple tasks in a non preemptive manner. Let's go to make some changes in the code. Uh, the first one will be very simple. We need to locate the file custom underscore stm.c. And in there, you will find the event handler for the right transaction. Uh, we first need to include the main.h to have the visibility of the macros that define the LED. And then on line 148, we will toggle an LED on any write event. So notice that we are actually not parsing the value. We are simply acting on the fact that uh, the write transaction happened. In fact, if you want to parse the value, you can scroll down to the very bottom of the presentation and you will see a few lines of code to do this. But we will keep this, keep it simple. We will simply toggle an LED just based on on the right itself. So let's go to st underscore vpan and then app and then custom underscore stm.c. First, let's include uh, the header file. Uh, make sure that all the code you write is inside this user code sections. Otherwise, next time you regenerate the Cupa mix, uh, the code will disappear. If it's in the user section, the code will stay. So let's include main.h and on line 148. You see, this is the function that is responsible for handling the events. And here in this case, we will toggle the LED. You can use control tab for uh, contextual help. So we want to toggle the GPIO 
and uh, the green LED is called LD2. So the first argument is the port. The second argument is, uh, is, the, is the GPIO pin. And that's it. We can compile and flash it. So right now, if I again connect to my target, and go to my service and my characteristic and write anything because the value is not relevant in this application, the green LED will turn on. And as you see, it did. If I write again, it will switch off. In fact, this is the end of the first part of this hands-on.